Welcome to Speaking of Grace, the weekly message podcast from the Whole Life Church in Orlando, Florida. We're a multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multi-generational congregation committed to our mission of loving people into a lifelong friendship with God. We are committed to our vision of being a church without walls, fully engaged in serving the people of our community. Thank you for joining us as we continue Speaking of Grace. Hope you're doing well today. Yeah? Anybody else get a blessing out of today's worship music? Mm. Yeah. I hope you've been enjoying our uh, Latin History Month. Uh, it's, uh, it's that time of the year where we celebrate the contributions of our Latin American community, both here at Whole Life Church and in our country. Uh, if you haven't taken in a minute or two just to, to look, you can I mean, just take a minute and Google Latin American contributions, and you are going to just really realize how rich our lives are because of Latin culture. And that's one of the things that we love about Whole Life Church. We love our diversity. We love that we're not all the same and that each one of us has a unique and special flavor that makes this the great taste in church that it is. All right. We're better through diversity. We're better through diversity. And so I just want to thank our, uh, our Brazilian music worship team who have just brought us a uh, delicious flavor today. Yes. Yes, it is. We are on the uh, third sermon in a sermon series on love. Love is. We're taking specifically a look at 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7 and really getting to the bottom of what love is. The first Sabbath, we found out that love is patient and kind. And those two are inextricably tied together. It's not enough just to bite your tongue. You actually have to be kind to that person that you're biting your tongue with. And so that's part of love. And then last week, we realized that love is not jealous. Uh, we don't, true love doesn't, isn't afraid of loss. And it's also not um, a f- wanting what belongs to another. And this week, we are going to go ahead and discover that love is not boastful or arrogant. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to invite your presence here. We want to hear from you. We want you to speak to us. Help us to know what you want us to know about not being boastful or arrogant. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Well, some of you might remember that this, uh, this sermon might have some special importance to me, right? Uh, when my brother was introducing me before I even got here, you might have heard him say that there was in his words, a time in my life where I was arrogant and boastful. Um, Those who know me might say that time is still here. We don't know. Um, It's something that I have to actually spend some real intentional time thinking about. And um, and so I'll be a little vulnerable with you as we kind of talk about this topic today, because um, I like to think that in a church where we're worshiping together, we can admit that we're not perfect. And then we won't use that as a weapon against each other, right? And so that's an important thing because if we can't be vulnerable with each other, there's no, there's no realness. It's just fake. And we know that's not what Whole Life Church is. We're real. And so one of the things that's, that it seems probably, I think that if you're not a Christian, it must be somewhat baffling how so many Christians come across as braggadocious and boastful, arrogant, right? Because if you're not Christian, you kind of know that bragging and arrogance is not a good thing. And you know that Christians are supposed to know that. And I think uh, Al Al Franken was on uh, Letterman many years ago. And I I think he kind of summarizes, now Al Franken's not a Christian, right? And Al Franken, though, gets the fact that Christians probably should be humble, and yet that seems to not always be the case. And he points out something that most Christians should be aware of. Jesus was not arrogant or boastful. Jesus didn't walk 
with a swagger. Jesus didn't go like, you know, see that uh, water I turned into wine? Me. That was me. <laughs> it's not a show off. See that blind guy over there that uh, he's not bumping into things anymore? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Was it a blowhard? <laughs> yeah. That big boulder, I, you know, from, uh, I rolled out of the entrance of the cave where I was dead. Now yeah. I'm alive. Yeah. Bring it on. You know, Jesus. <laughs> Al Franken gets it. Do we? What does it mean to be boastful? Well, I think that one of the things we have to realize is that boastfulness is probably the outward verbalization of arrogance. Arrogance is when we have a too high opinion of ourself, or we appear to have a too high opinion of ourself. It's when we go ahead and arrogant people make other people feel like their opinion doesn't matter, and that other people are less than. And boastfulness is the way that we go ahead and exhibit that. So you got your traditional boast. I'm going to go through a couple different ways of boasting today, okay? So you got your traditional boast. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to be careful to use something that can't be pinned on me that you know that I couldn't possibly be boasting about this, okay? So a traditional boast is, you know, showing excessive pride, self-satisfaction, one's achievements, possessions, or abilities. But let's go ahead and use, you know, an example because I'm always better with examples, right? So uh, that would be me looking at you and saying, oh, you bench 250, I bench 500 in sets of 10, 15 times before I eat breakfast. <laughs> All right, that's traditional boasting. You get the idea, right? Generally, boasting is, is me showing you why I'm better. Um, I had to, I, I'm grateful for teenage children because my vocabulary has been enriched. Um, I did not know what this was before, um, before my children came home and explained it to me. Flexing. This is showing off, or showing superiority in word or action, but I really think that flexing is more about action than it is about word, right? Flexing is like when you go to the gym and it's your first time there and you kind of are looking at yourself in the mirror and the, uh, the bodybuilder that's been there for the last 17 years comes behind you and goes, <clears throat> You know, that's flexing, right? It's like it's showing, you know, it's, it's putting you in your place visually, right? Can we just be honest for a minute? Sometimes, sometimes we flex with our stuff, right? You know, we don't say anything, but we know that we're sending a certain message with the stuff that we have, right? We're kind of flexing. Yeah, I've made it in life. Look at what, what I'm doing. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with having nice stuff. The question is, why do we have nice stuff? Is it to flex? Or is it because we just genuinely like that, something we enjoy, and so we have it. But we're not trying to show somebody else that they're less than, or even that we are equal to. So that's flexing. That's one of my favorites too. It's the humble brag, right? This is the one where you say, man, I really envy Really wish I, I really envy you. You know, I'm I'm just constantly ripping my clothes because every time I flex and I, my, I'm having to spend so much money on new clothes because I just keep ripping my clothes every time I flex. And I just I'm envious that you're able just to you know always fit your clothes and never have to worry about them ripping. That's the that's the humble brag, right? It's clothed in a self-deprecating statement, but what we really know is that what you're really trying to say is, yeah, right. Then this, this is the Christian's favorite kind of boasting, right? Because this, you can't, you can't argue with Jesus, right? This is the, the blessed boast, right? You know what I'm talking about. This is the one where you're like, you know, I'm just so thankful to God for giving me the perseverance and the strength to wake up at 5 a.m. every morning to go work out at the gym for eight hours. I'm just glad that he gave me that endurance to be able to do that. And I'm so glad that, uh, you know, that he gave me the physique that's able to hold all this mass. I, I'm just, you know, I'm very, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, right? The blessed boast. Um, this is one we like to see on social media a lot, right? Right? And I'm not picking. If you use a hashtag blessed, I do that too here and there, right? But the question again is why are you doing it? Is it because you really feel blessed or because you're kind of trying to point out, hey, right here, 
right here. Look at me. Who are we really? Are, are we? Are we? Are we pointing people? Are we really saying it's about God? Or are we really saying, "Hey, hey, hey! Look at right here. Ken's doing pretty good." And oh, and thanks, thank you, Jesus, for that. Right? You're following along, right? And if you really stop and think of it, even sometimes those of us who are are proud of our humility, if we're really honest with ourselves. It's a little bit of arrogance in our life. We find a little bit of superiority. We look at ourselves and we think, well, at least I'm doing better than them, right? Kind of pat ourselves on the back. Well, not shockingly, Jesus isn't a big fan of boasting. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted, says Jesus. Matthew 23, verse 12. I've had to learn that one the hard way. I remember the uh, getting out of uh, out of college. I thought, you know, I was pretty much the snap, crackle, pop of life. And uh, that first job was a was a disaster. It was a train wreck for me. And it really um, was some, a gift from God. Truly, it was because it reminded me of who really is is the one who gives me success in life. Not me, but God. And God has unfortunately had to teach me that lesson more than once because I'm a slow learner. Jude 16, there's actually only one, one chapter to Jude. So it's actually the 16th verse says, these people are grumblers and complainers living only to satisfy their desires. They brag loudly about themselves and they flatter others to get what they want. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness I'm sorry, I jumped on to the next one, uh, next verse, but uh, let's go ahead and stop here for a second. They flatter others to get what they want. They brag loudly. You know, sometimes we use bragging as a way of manipulation and arrogance as a way to manipulate. By projecting myself, I'm going to intimidate you into doing what I want you to do. By going ahead and saying, well, look at me, I've got it all figured out. Now you need to go ahead and do what I said. It's It's a form of manipulation and the Bible correctly calls it out. Romans, Paul speaking, their lives became full of every kind of envy and wickedness, sin, greed, hate. And by the way, so keep track of all these sinful behaviors, okay? Greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. In Christian circles, we spend a lot of time on certain sins, don't we? And a lot less on others. We want to say, well, you can't be a member. You can't belong if you're doing this, this, and this. But this, this, and this is okay. I mean, it's not okay. You need to work on that. It's a problem. I want you to look at the list. It says proud and boastful. I'm sure glad that that God's church never gave up on me, even though that has been an issue in my life. The real question for us Christian family is the question of whether we're willing to acknowledge the issues that are in our life and turn them over to God to work on. That's the issue. That's the issue. But you look at this long list of things and (laughs) proud and boastful is in the same category as murderer. (laughs) Okay. So that puts me in my place. It reminds me of how much I need Jesus. Let's, uh, let's dig in a little bit deeper. Why? Let's dig into the psychology of arrogance. And this is the part that's a little painful for me. So bear with me here, okay? Why? Why do we boast? Why are we arrogant? Usually, it's rooted in insecurity, a fear that do- others don't understand our value. And I know that it's hard to believe that. I mean, it, when we run into arrogant people, we think, well, they think they're, they're better than everybody. The problem is they usually don't. They usually don't. They're just having to tell themselves this. They tell them that self because they have a sense that they aren't worthwhile. That if, if they don't point it out to other people, other people won't know it. It's a sense of fear that they won't be accepted unless they can prove that they have worth. right? 
And we live in a American culture that judges success by what we do, right? You're successful based on what you are able to produce. And for me, this is one of the, the, the things that I think slapped me in the face the hardest because I've never thought that I was insecure about who I was. And yet I've admitted I've had a problem with arrogance and boasting in my life. And one of the hardest things for me to grasp hold of is that I have a mentality that I need to show you that I'm worth loving. And so if I'm arrogant or boastful, it's because I need you to know I'm worthwhile. I have value. Look at what I've achieved. Look at what I've done. And it's not just me. It's a whole culture of that. A whole culture that says, if you aren't producing, you don't have worth. If you're going through an emotional breakdown, you are a worse person. And so some of us take that to heart and try to prove our worth. Hey, look, look at what I'm accomplishing. Look at what I'm doing. But it's a deep-seated fear that we won't be valued. I hope that the next time you run into somebody who boasts a lot and is arrogant, that you'll take a moment to stand back and not judge them, but just say, I wonder where the hurt is in your life. I wonder if there's anything that I could say or do for you that would make you know that you have worth no matter what you do. Because that's true love. True love is given not because somebody earns it or did anything for it, but because the person is inherently worthwhile because they are a human being made in the image of God. Perfect love casts out fear. And when we are able to love others unconditionally, we can help people with the insecurities that they face in their life. We can help them get to a better place. Not everybody's going to respond to that. There's some things that are very deep, and traumatic, and that the, there's deep psychological scars and things that really take a lot of work and, and help, frankly, to get through. But the question is, do we give up on people because of that, or do we love them anyway? Perfect love casts out fear. So we're getting into the solution, aren't we? So you're saying, okay, Ken, thank you for telling me how to deal with an arrogant person. Can you now tell the person next to me who's arrogant how to deal with that? Because I'll do my part, but they need to do their part, right? Okay, let's talk to them for a second. But can the axe boast greater power than the person who uses it? Is the saw greater than the person who saws? Isaiah chapter 10, verse 15. Isaiah is talking to arrogant people in this text. And what he's wanting to remind them of is this. No matter how high your IQ is, no matter how much determination, grit, perseverance, whatever else you want to say that you have in life, the only reason you have it is because God put his hand on you as a tool. Okay? We're a bunch of tools. All right? Take that however you want to. And God gives us worth when he puts his hand on our life and uses us for his purposes. Jesus is what gives us worth. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. If you want to boast about anything, boast about the fact that God has his hand on your life. Boast about that. Boast about the difference that he's made in your life. Jeremiah says it this way. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom or the powerful boast in their power or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. I want to point something out. Write that verse down, Jeremiah 8, 
verses 23 through 24 and go home and look at it a little bit harder. Look at what the first part of the verse says. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom or the powerful boast in their power or the rich boast in their riches. But then it says, I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love, who brings justice and righteousness to the earth. I want to suggest to you this. When he says, don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, God is saying true wisdom is all about living the right way. Living in a right relationship with God, righteousness. And when he says, don't let the powerful boast in their power, he's saying true power cares about justice. Powerful people have been given the opportunity to create justice in a world full of injustice. And those who have riches, well, what does God say about that? The greatest gift you can ever give somebody is the gift of love. Unfailing love, perfect love. True wealth is displayed in unfailing love. True power is displayed in providing justice and true wisdom is displayed in living in a right relationship with God. But I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys, but I am a visual learner. And so I thought I'd bring something that I hope will be helpful to you um, as a visual aid. Um, I want to use this. Remember, I've talked to you before about thinking metaphorically. I want you to think metaphorically, okay? And I'm going to do my best not to brag, but this is my favorite piece of art that we have in our home. This is Rochelle and I's wedding picture. Um, we got married out in California, um, and uh, we, I am really grateful to my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law who paid to have amazing photographer and then paid for, for this, um, this picture. And I'm also grateful for my parents who then paid to have this frame put on the picture. But let me ask you a question. What's the point? When you look at this point, piece of art, what's the point? I want to say that it comes down to this right here. Okay? It's two people who chose each other and love each other. Right? That's the point. Everything else in this picture is working to point, push your eye that way. Think about it. You look at how the rose, this is, the, these photographers were pretty incredible, but look how the rose push your eye towards that. Look at how there's one lone tree up here that's somewhat symbolic if you think about it, and then there's two people beginning a life here. But what I really want you also to think about is the frame. How ridiculous would it be if this frame said, I'm what this piece of art is all about? Be a little bit silly. It's a beautiful frame, right? It's a gorgeous frame. The person who framed this did a fantastic job framing it. But what is the frame? What's the point of a frame? The point of a frame is actually to push your eye towards the main subject of what's in the picture. Look at how this frame has gold in it and browns. Look how they match up and pull the color out of the picture. Did you notice the little white edging that the person who put the frame together put in there? Why did they do it? Well, they told me why, so I know. They did it because they wanted to draw attention to Rochelle's dress. And that white edge pushes your eyes towards that white dress. Family, can I just stop for a moment and say, we are the frames and Jesus is the picture? Okay. If you want to know really how to get over your arrogance, I'm just how I get over mine is I remember that I'm not the main point. I'm just a frame. I want to be a beautiful frame, but I only want to be a beautiful frame in the, in the context of pushing people's eyes this way, not this way. If I had shown you this picture, you, some of you who are real, maybe artificial eyes, you might've said something about the frame. Oh, that's beautifully framed. But the point of the picture is, is these two people who just got married. It's, it's this gorgeous piece of art right here. And that frame is just there to 
Hold it together and push your eyes in. Family, that's what we are. We have our worth, not because we're a beautiful frame, but because we're a part of the beautiful piece of art. Our worth comes because somebody chose us, God chose us, to be the frames for other people to see him. That means that we're all worth something. We have nothing to prove. We don't have to brag. We don't have to be arrogant because everything that we have comes from him, the master frame maker. And we're there to push people's eyes towards Jesus. And that's the problem with arrogance and boastfulness and bragging is it does not push people's focus towards Jesus. It pushes it towards me. It takes away from the picture. This is how American poet and author Anthony Lacone put it. He said it this way. It's better to find success through God than finding it on one's own merits. Some who usually find their own success become boastful. Where through God, it's gratitude. Do you see the difference When we find our worth in ourselves, we become boastful about ourselves. But when we recognize that our worth is in Jesus, we become grateful. I am so grateful that you have made me into a beautiful frame. Please help me to push other people's eyes towards you so they can see you. And that's why it's so important that if we are to truly love, love is not boastful or arrogant. Awesome. All right. Now is the time in the service where we have a little Q&A with Ken uh, about the sermon he just talked about. Um, and uh, if you haven't had a chance yet, you still can post your question either on wholelife.church slash live or look for today's service uh, on Facebook. Uh, we already have some questions in, and so I will get to them right now. This one's a really good one from uh, Freud, and he asks, uh, I haven't met Freud, so, so welcome, Freud. Uh, How can we overcome this Christian pride, this feeling that by walking with Jesus, we are better than others who apparently uh, don't walk with him? Like where I'm Christian, I believe in God, therefore I'm better than everyone else that does it. Yeah, wow, that's that's a good one. Um, I think probably that one of the ways that I do it is by reminding myself that um, I have a tendency to sometimes behave worse than people who know better, that know less than I do about yeah. what God is looking for and what God wants. And so um, I am not better than anybody. I am um, truly the, the grateful recipient of, of God's mercy and love, and I want to go ahead and share that same mercy and love with others. That sometimes maybe means looking looking for ways to make yourself humble. Or yeah. um, I know when I was a teenager, I went to um, I went to a private school most of my life, but then went to public school one year and um, thought that I was the most Christianly of all, just because <laughs> of where I had been raised. And every day at lunchtime, kids were praying at the flagpole, and I was not. And that was a very humbling experience for me personally was like, wow, I thought I was the best, but definitely not. (laughs) Good reminder. Um, This kind of leads into the next question from Trafina, which is how do you help someone who is arrogant, but doesn't know it uh, or, or they don't believe that they are. And is that our job or not our job? Yeah, that's a hard one. I think it depends on the the relationship you have with the person. Um, If you are in a very close relationship, uh, relationship with somebody. Uh, I think after a lot of prayer and thoughtfulness, uh, you can uh, bring the subject up and, and share. Um, but I do think that one of the, the difficulties in life is that when you don't really truly care for somebody or they don't know you do, um, it can um, be very unsolicited and not welcome. And we shouldn't be surprised when people push back on us when we say, hey, you know, you're feel a little arrogant there. I I know that uh, I had people in my life who pointed that out to me and I was like, no, I'm just confident. Um, And uh, just stating facts. Yeah. Just say, you know, if you're right, I mean, you know, Um, and so I think that 
I think, again, that one of the ways that we can really minister to people is to love on them and exhibit selfless love towards them and pray for them. A lot of times God has a way of the best, the best remover of arrogance and boastfulness is God, hands down. He has a way of putting things in our life that force us to confront some of those issues. And so if we allow God to do his work, um, he does some pretty amazing things. So the answer is it can be your, it can be something that God's calling you to do, but be very prayerful about it before you, before you go there. And uh, this last one that we have time for, and if uh, you still want to submit a question, go for it. We always answer them in the podcast, which is called This Is Whole Life. And it is literally available everywhere that podcasts are heard, um, absolutely everywhere. We we track and we see the strangest things. Someone listens on their watch, even um, on their Apple watch. They listen and we're like, it's cool. a great way to do Somehow it. Somehow they got it. Um, um, this was from Richard at First Service. And Unfortunately, it's not loading, so I'll paraphrase it. But um, uh, are we here at Whole Life in danger of being boastful because we often are, we have a great service here. we're the best. We're the best. Yeah. Are, are we in danger of, of being too braggadocious here? Yeah, good question. Not, yeah, that was careful. Uh, um, I don't know. It depends. I guess the question is whether uh, there's nothing wrong with being proud of your kids, being proud of your family, being proud of your church, um, and being grateful to be a part of it and wanting other people to experience uh, the joy that you find. There's something wrong when when you tell them that their church is less than your church mm-hmm. and that, that if they're enjoying their church, that they just haven't experienced the fullness of church until they come to whole life. Um, and so what I would just say is that if you're trying to, if you're using that to put put down another church, then it, then it, it's a problem. If you're using it to say, hey, I've, I've found something that's meaningful in my life, maybe it would be meaningful in your life, then I think that's a different thing altogether. Very good. And once again, we didn't get to all of them uh, from this service or from first service, so it's going to be a jam-packed podcast, so make sure you check that out. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, family... Thank you so much for being family. I hope that you know today that you are needed here at church today. God had a date planned for you. And whether you joined us online or whether you came here in person, God met you here and had an experience with you today. And I hope you'll take that experience and share it with your world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for your love. We thank you that in spite of being the creator of all things, that you are not arrogant and you are not proud, and you are not boastful. Help us to point others towards you so that they can see the beauty and wonder of who you are. Pray these things in your name. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful week, and you know I love you, right? Love you. Hope you have a great week. Hi, this is Randy McGray, podcast producer and host here at Whole Life Church. Loving people into a lifelong friendship with God is our mission at the Whole Life Church and our podcasts, Speaking of Grace and its companion, 15 with Andy, Randy, and Jeff, are designed to help facilitate conversations that help us grow together in that pursuit. Now that you've heard the message for this week, don't forget to check out the Whole Life Takeaways for this message. Swipe up in today's show notes and join the conversation. Speaking of conversations, each Wednesday morning we take a closer look at the week's message. That's right, the one you just listened to. We discuss practical ways to apply spiritual lessons and ask honest questions about the issues we face as Christians, all focused through the lens of grace. Your voice is a welcomed addition to that conversation. We encourage your thoughts and your questions by sending a voicemail or text to 407-965-1607 or send an email to podcast at wholelife.church. You can find everything podcast related on our website, wholelife.church slash podcast. And plan on spending every Tuesday evening and Wednesday morning with us as we bring you the Whole Life Church inspiration you love straight into your headphones. Thanks for listening and have a great week.